one. Super friend. Sit down. I was going to say that word, um, and then I've just had it. I have had it. Welcome to Super Friends Sit Down. Everybody, I am Vincent Stampoulos. In front of me, directly, just taking a sip of water, is my best friend, Alessandro Bikini Chini. Close enough. You said it better than most telemarketers do. There you go. That's how I roll. That's how I fucking roll. Sup, y'all. What a challenge it's been to record this podcast. Welcome to episode 43, day. where uh, somehow our audio just turns itself off all the time. Um, Some might say it's a conspiracy to keep this podcast from continuing in on any further. That's Golly. That's for you to decide. Do you know what a, do you know what a conspiracy theory um, is, Alex? A conspiracy theory? Do you know what a conspiracy theory is? I That's can't conspiracy? talk. conspiracy my mouth is just so wet. It's by Mike Tyson. We're talking about conspiracy. <laughs> Do you know what a conspiracy is? Um, By definition. <laughs> you know, it's funny you say that, because by definition, I would just be like, a theory that could be proven or disproven, a story made up about a topic. Can I tell you? You're yeah. wrong. Okay. You are so off the mark. A conspiracy by definition... Is the action of plotting an agreement between two or more to commit a crime in the future? You can be charged with conspiracy. It is a real thing. You can conspire against those around you. Um, but where conspiracy theories come from is the brain and people who have had way too much time on their hands. Or a little too much meth. Or a lot of too much meth. Okay. <laughs> okay. Welcome to the brain. Waves. Okay. Thank you so much. I almost got killed the other day. Please tell me how. I was helping to change a tire, and the car fell off the jack. Wow. So, if the tire wasn't already on the car... You'd be dead. As Yeah, there's a possibility that I may have gotten crushed by a car. Um. In the beautiful Finger Lakes. Oh, this happened while you were on vacation. This actually happened yesterday. The universe was conspiring against you because it knew this episode was coming. Mm -hmm. Everything is conspiring against us, Alex. They're all conspiring against us. What the fuck else is new? (laughs) Ain't that right, bitch. Say it loud. Say it proud. (laughs) (laughs) What were we talking about before we had... Full disclosure, we had tons of fucking audio issues going forward with this episode, so I'm just assuming that it's the universe saying, don't do this or we're going to come get you, but... Before we were um, hit with a whole bunch of audio issues, what were we talking about? Dude. Baby Jesus and adult Jesus, right? Oh, uh, why, why, <laughs> why in why in the Bible? I mean, feel free to correct me because I didn't read it. I went to CCD and played with tech decks the whole time. Um, <laughs> At least you went to CCD. I, I what was, does that stand for? Uh, closed caption dicks. Um, when I went Works to, <laughs> it wouldn't. It's so you can read them while you watch them. Um, <laughs> Isn't that what closed captioning is? It's like subtitles? I mean, closed caption is captions for you to read, but like, how are you supposed to read a dick? You tell me. <laughs> you've, you've had. More I don't read. I suck. You've had more experiences with them, so you you can do oral braille. You just read the ridges with your Goodbye. mouth. Goodbye. Good day. Thank you so much for coming to this episode. I'm so glad that we have had a record breaking. Less than four minutes of actual conversation recorded, and I'm ready to go. Hey, man, you signed up for this. Um, <sighs> we were talking about how in the Bible, in fact, I just want to point out that uh, that Blake actually brought this up. Oh, I do want to say Kyle did say conspiracy theories. We need to have uh, Blake on. So a part two of this will probably end up. Having oh, Blake on. God, that is Shout chaotic. Out Kyle and, Blake. and I love it. But Blake brought this up and I, I laughed and I was like, <laughs> wait. Because you never hear about young Jesus. You know how, like, CBS decided that we needed to hear about young Sheldon? Right. Yeah, you know who needed to hear about that? No one. No one needed to hear about young Sheldon. But we never hear about young Jesus. He was just a baby and then a carpenter adult that can do magic. Um, I have very many questions about this like character, did, like, Jesus. Like, did he skateboard? Did he play basketball? Did he move to Hollywood and star in a slew of low-budget horror films for two years before moving back home and settling down and having a family? No. That was Maureen Prescott in Scream 3. I was going to say, <laughs> like, 
This is a very specific, <laughs> very specific fantasy I'm giving you. <laughs> no, um, I do want to know: uh, Did Jesus happen to celebrate the lovely holiday known as Ram Springer? Maybe, right? That's probably why we never hear about him. His whole life what was Ram Springer. Like, did did they have birthday parties, or were they just like, you've gained another year? I don't know. This is all BC or AD. It'd be. It'd be AD, because BC is before Christ. What does the AD stand for after what? All dicks. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's... I, for somebody I, who's straight, you do you do bring up dicks quite a bunch. I do have one. Um, AD, I think it's uh, I use Alt, Alto Domini or something. It's something Latin, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to have to look this up now, because now I'm actually very curious. The Bible's all conspiracy, by the way. Let's just start with that. Oh, God, here we go. And the phones go off. Every line says Karen. <laughs> um... That's not true. I see a Deborah. 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 Is that a new wave? Is that a hybrid strain? Uh, it depends on how it's spelled. I had to think about that for a second. I really did. There's a few ways to spell Deborah. Yeah, there really is. Deborah. D e b o r a h. Deborah. Anno Domini. Yeah, oh, you're right. You uh, Ad BC. Huh. Okay. Cool. Now that I know what it means, I'm. I'm done with the topic. Done with the topic completely. I am quenched. My thirst for knowledge has been thoroughly quenched. But yeah, if anybody wants to send us their theories on uh, Teenage Jesus, please let us know. Because I would love to know. Do you think he was making water into wine for his friends? They're like, we're underage. No, he was. Well, when he was younger, he was turning water into Mountain Dew. And then when. (laughs) How old was he when he was turning water into Mountain Dew? Like, what are we saying? Like 10 to 11? I'm going to say in order between 9 and 14. Okay, because from like 15 to 17. Water into Red Bull. Yeah, or Monster. Ooh. Ooh. Well, can't do Monster. It's from the devil. A, a conspiracy. Oh! That's a conspiracy theory. That is a big conspiracy um, theory. Yeah, we should so, find that and post that on the page this week. For, we could. Uh, conspiracies! That's, that's an easy one. Um, but yeah, uh, from like 15 to 7. Well, I'd say like 13, like right after Mountain Dew, like 13 to 16. I'm 27 was, and I was Red Bull. Mountain Dew. It's great. Um, Baja Blast. Oh, can't go wrong. 13 to 16, I'd say it was Red Bull. And then, like, 17 to 20 was, like, guys, I got away from Joseph for the day. Like, bring some, bring some, uh... Bring some body of Christ. Whatever you drink, whatever you drink out of cups back then. Um, Chalice. Bowls. Bring some wood bowls. Bring your hands. Just bring your hands in a cup shape. Bring me some lumber and I'll cut them into cups and then I'll <laughs> turn my... I don't bo- even need a cup. I'm just going to turn it in, in midair and then throw it in your mouth. <laughs> Bring me your Poland Spring, and I'll turn it into wine. And then we'll go watch. Um, who's a popular Christian band? We'll go watch Donny Osmond. Is he popular Christian singer? Is he Christian like that? I, th- I think I'm thinking of the right person. I Maybe? actually don't know. I uh, am I thinking of Joel Osteen? Joel is that the guy from the Seven Hundred Club? <laughs> Joel Osteen is that? I think he's like a famous televangelist. Yeah, oh, he's one of those people that makes like a billion dollars just like talking about a book and talking people, about conspiracies. And people are like, "Praise be, pay you, blessed be the." Fruit. I live in the trailer, but you do it right. Um, I, I wonder if the Handmaid's Tale would be considered a conspiracy theory, because it's a book written about like a future dystopian world we're gonna eventually. Live I think in. it's it's more so like the shape of what's to come. Yeah. Dark future storytelling. Did you watch that sound clip I sent you the other uh, the other day about Falcon Winter Soldier? No, thanks. I forgot what I was doing, but I was so uninterested at the time, only because Marvel does nothing for me. So like, I'm really happy for you, and like, I'm glad that you felt that way. I think I was watching I was watching a conspiracy documentary that I was really into actually. So that we'll talk about. I won't spoil anything, but I finished Falcon and Winter Soldier the other day, and the ending. I found was very powerful towards the real life day and age of this planet, or more so this country. It's pretty fucked up, but Anthony Mackie, well done. Very well said. Whoever wrote his script, very well done. Very well said. I liked it a lot. I would hope you watch it too, because you'll be like... No, I mean, just like the clip I sent you. Oh. (laughs) It's three minutes. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I didn't didn't sit for WandaVision, I'm not going to sit for that. It's okay. It's really just the clip that I wanted you to watch because I knew you didn't be interested. I, I would like to talk to you about a TV show. I don't think I've had the chance to bring this up to you yet. Cruel Summer? Heard of it, never watched it. Okay. That's pretty interesting. You want to talk about conspiracy theorists? That's a good show because that gets your mind fucking churning. I think there's a song called Cruel Summer by Bananarama. It's possible. Or Tears for Fears? 
It has like a really fun beat. Hold on. I know like and suddenly last summer that like 80s song but um cruel summer great show I know what you did last summer <sighs> I know what I did last summer not a fucking thing because it was a goddamn pandemic I did some cool shit <laughs> yeah it was cruel summer banana banana rama is it really that's cool yeah you would you would know it by the way speaking of songs I found out I found out I found out the guy who did mambo number no. five Lou Bega mm-hmm. and the guy or people who did cotton eye Joe the okay. Rednecks with yeah. an X instead of a CKS. Okay. They have album, an album of songs that just are exactly the same as their hit songs. And it's I, horrifying. I forgot uh so when we were when I was doing research for the 90s episode, I forgot what band it was, but all of their songs, the lyrics were different, but the music was exactly the same. It was That's the amazing. same exact beat. It's probably Lou Vega. No, it was the, I think it was, who does this, uh, like the I Saw the Sign song? Ace of Bass? Yeah, Ace of Bass. All their songs are, it's the same, it's the same uh, instrument playing, and then just different lyrics. Really? You're, we're going to have to test that theory out. Conspiracy theory. <laughs> Hello, in music. Another quick conspiracy, oh my god, I'm getting too excited. Blah, 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 blah. I'm having a stroke and I can't talk. <laughs> conspiracy theory is the Wizard of Oz um, conspiracy theory What's the album? Pink Floyd, right? If you play it from start to finish with the, well, the Wizard of Oz, like it all makes sense or something. Do you know the conspiracy theory? No. I thought you were going to talk about in. the Wizard of Oz with the hanging man in the back. That's also, there's, let me tell you, there's a lot of conspiracies about the wonderful world of Oz. I'll tell you that. There's that one with, with the, the Munchkin allegedly uh, hanging himself. Then um, there was just a bunch of like on set craziness. Like, the Wicked Witch got uh, burned really bad by the pyrotechnics that they used for one of her like stunts. That like put a huge pause in production. Judy mm-hmm. Garland was just drugged up to be skinny because you know she had to look like she was twelve. She was fully like forty eight, and they're like, "Since you're wasted, bitch, let's pull that skin back." Hollywood, Hollywood's a dark place. Hollywood is a dark place. I was gonna look something up on my phone, and now for the life of me, I can't fucking remember. Well, we went from talking about the nineties and Ace of Base, and then he started talking about Oz. Not the prison. There show. was a no. There was a music thing I was gonna look up, and now I don't remember. Hmm. Was it the Was it the album you played backwards and it has a satanic message? That's um, "Umbrella" by Rihanna. Have you ever played that song backwards? Do you think I've ever played that song forwards? <laughs> Funny story about the song "Umbrella." <laughs> Where? Oh, was I? I was at the Tire Bank show. <laughs> was it raining? I swear to God, I was at the Tire Bank show. Was it raining? No. Then why did you need your umbrella? Uh, I didn't say I needed an umbrella. I said I have a funny song. I have a funny story about the song Umbrella. Uh, I was at the Tyra Bing show, and as a pre-show like uh, guest warm-up game, they brought a bunch of people from the guest down to like the main stage area, and they played like a trivia game. And one of the questions was, how many times does Rihanna say "Umbrella, Ella, Ella" in the song "Umbrella"? And I believe it's twenty-three times. And there was forty-seven writers on that song. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know how many writers there actually were. <laughs> I mean, I'm probably not far off. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of very simplistic songs that have had multiple writers. Like, did you ever hear the song Gucci Gang by Lil Pump? No. I'm sure that song had more than one writer. And Absolutely. That's, and that's just sad. Um, I think... Don't I, listen to that song, I by the way. It's fucking won't. terrible. I probably won't. I'm so mad that I can't think of what I was going to look up because I know it was something that was going to be like, ha oh! <laughs> oh, okay. You know, like it was. It was gonna have. It was gonna have a, a deep, impactful, meaningful moment. But um, my brain had the adumption. The, oh, the whoa. I thought you were gonna say like the adumption. The like, adumption. That's, that's exactly what word. it is. And that's definitely not a word. <laughs> yep, it's not. My brain is is hemorrhaging information out at a rapid fire pace. Ooh, let's see. That I, uh, I just yeah, exactly. Just a, this this conspiracy. Whole, this whole episode is self sabotage. <laughs> <laughs> We're about fourteen minutes in and we haven't done a single fucking thing. But you know what is also a conspiracy? Time. Time's not real. Reality. Real. This is not real. Space. I'm not real. None of us is real. The, lo- eh. the moon landing, which is a real one. Well, let did, me show you about this book. Did you know the wheel of the Price is Right is full with the cremated ashes of former hosts? Is that? Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> There's no way that's real. Did you, 
I told you I was making up a fake one. Uh, <laughs> I was like, where the fuck did you read that? My brains. Wait, which one did you say was uh, the... Oh, my God. I don't even remember what you just said about conspiracy. That was the, the moon landing. That's right. Moon landing. Oh. <laughs> um, this uh, this uh, conspiracy book actually has several subjects. We've got political assassinations, spies in war, government cover-ups, which the moon landing falls under. Which category is Ace of Base? <sighs> Mythical creatures. <laughs> No, um, I think that's Enya. <laughs> actually identity crisis. <laughs> I think that's Enya that you're looking at with mythical mythical creatures or Bjork. <sighs> Bjork is not a very 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 mystical creature. Mystical uh, beyond or mythical? belief, royal scandals, scoundrel, S- scandals. Sorry, scoundrels. scandal. Okay, whatever. Famous faces, unfinished journeys. So the moon landing is on page fifty six. Let's just. Turn to that really quick and see what the fuck it says. Do you think the moon landing was fake? Nah. I mean, if they were able to, like, really fake that, good on ya. But at the same time, that's a lot. You know what's some shit? What? Is that in the 60s, or whenever the moon landing was, you could see that in black and white, clear as day. Somebody robs a bank. It's like you're watching the Spice Channel. You can't see a goddamn channel. thing. It's like you're watching the TV with the camera with fucking Vaseline on it. Yeah, the Spice Channel. Spice Channel? Do you remember the Spice Channel? No. Spice Channel was like cable porn that every TV got, oh, I quote unquote. I Skinamax. I was a Skinamax bitch. Same, ide- same ideology, but the, it was all like warped. Didn't, and we, like, didn't we talk about this? I watched Queer as Folk, and that was my sexual yeah. awakening. Yeah. That was on Showtime. Ca- cable television. It was Brooklyn Spine. <laughs> I broke my back. The um, moon landing. Okay. Skeptics suggest the moon landing never happened. They claim that after technical problems threatened the project, NASA staged an elaborate hoax in great secrecy to fulfill President Kennedy's 1961 vow to Congress. So this happened in 1961. History lesson. Kennedy had called for the United States to commit know-how, manpower, and limitless cash to landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to Earth before the decade was over. Given the risks of space flight beyond Earth orbit, skeptics argue it was safe to win. It was safer to win the space race by deception. It was not important. It was important not to fail to, to beat the Russians and distract the U.S. public from the unpopular Vietnam War. Conspiracy theorists point to apparent anomalies in the film footage of the Apollo astronauts, such as camera crosshairs on the moon rocks, uh, the stars and stripes seemingly uh, seemingly ruffled by air currents, the lack of visible stars in the lunar sky, and the aberrant shadows. This proves the astronauts were in a film studio. They argue that the moonscape was just painted background, and it was all fake. Hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. That seems like a lot of work. But I guess it's not as much work as actually going to the moon. It's definitely not. And also, I mean, like, any movies that can do it. But I could, I could see it being, like, one of those movie things where it's like, okay, the set's all done, Mr. President. And they're like, wow, cool. And then they kill everybody. I actually did a project in sixth grade on the assassination of Abraham Lincoln as part of a conspiracy project. Wow. Um, I remember thinking, like, damn, that's so fucking boring. Because one of the other girls in my class got Marilyn Monroe. And then somebody else that I know got um, Lizzie Borden. I was like, why can't Who's I get Lizzie a bad Borden? bitch? Lizzie Borden bought a, Lizzie Borden got an axe and gave her father 40 wax when she had saw what she had done. She No. Lizzie Borden got an axe and gave her mother 40 wax when she had saw what she had done. She gave her father 41. You've never heard that? No. So, like, can allegedly... You, can you tell me without telling me in song? <laughs> That's the nursery rhyme of the conspiracy. All- allegedly, Lizzie Borden like took an axe and just whacked the shit out of her uh, stepmother, and then her father, and like she was like, "I swear to God, I didn't do it." But everyone was that like, was a nursery "Bitch, rhyme? you did it." They came out. Yeah, I don't know if it was like a nursery rhyme. Dude, nursery it. rhymes are really fucking dark. Like "Ring Around the Rosie" is a very. I'm pretty sure it's about, about plague. Yeah, it's about the plague. Trash. What's another like good conspiracy that we could talk about on here? You know what's great though is you brought up the you brought up ho- the the word hoax hoax and it reminded me of an all time legendary conspiracy slash legendary hoax, and that is Orson Welles and the War of the Worlds. You can't fucking be serious. You don't know this. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Maybe I just want you to explain it to me so I can listen to you talk because 
Um, unlike last week, I would like to very much not talk so much this week. <laughs> so Orson Welles pretty much like hijacked the radio waves and did like an emergency broadcast in his very like di- uh, distinct voice that he has that I can't replicate. Okay. Saying that there was an alien invasion happening. And he oh, was that trying, might be in this book. And he was describing them and like creating all sorts of crazy commotion and nonsense. Well, the truth is out there. And then it sparked the that great movie, um, Mars Attacks. Oh, cool. You were... Sp- War of the Worlds. Never mind. God damn you. War of the Worlds was based off of the you know the book War of the Worlds. And oh, that Tom Cruise movie. Ew. Wasn't that the Tom Cruise movie? It was, but I would have preferred you. Or say was sp- it the Brad Pitt movie? No, that was World War Z. Yeah, World War Z was Brad Pitt. War, War of the Worlds was Tom Cruise. And Signs was Mel Gibson. And Signs was Mel Gibson. And then Scary Movie was the Wayne's Brothers <laughs> and Leslie Nielsen. Um. Well. And Anthony Anderson, I think. That, well, they didn't come into like the sequels. It was like number three or four. Anthony Anderson came in as number three. Liam, he only came in. Leslie Nielsen. Leslie, yeah, there you go. Why am I thinking? Oh, R. Liam R. Nielsen. R.I.P. Uh, Liam Neeson. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now I'm thinking Leslie Jordan. I don't even know who that is. Leslie, he's that like cute little uh, shorter gay man who's like uh, got a super high pitched voice, white, white, white hair. You know who he is. You have to know who he is. I'll send you a video later. I know Montel Jordan. Speaking of short blonde people, this you want to talk about how a, we do it. You want to talk about a real conspiracy? Joe um, thinks that Courtney Love is the Zodiac killer. Mm-hmm. Over the weekend, I actually watched a documentary called Soaked in Bleach that came out in 2015, and it's actually about Courtney Love, but it has nothing to do with her being the Zodiac killer. It has to do with uh, the conspiracy around Kurt Cobain's death. I'm very. You didn't know Courtney Love was all about it, did you? You just thought she was some drugged out singer. She said, I have news for you. I can also kill people. I can also write articulate clues <laughs> that no one can figure out. I can also make... <laughs> I can also... Frame... Everyone thought I was just writing in code, but really I was just too high to write. <laughs> <laughs> and next thing I knew, I was framing Ted Cruz. Oh my God, that's right. That's another conspiracy that he's the Zodiac Zodi- Killer. Yeah. He's too tired. He's, he's too vacationing in Mexico. He's busy sleeping through people's speeches in Congress. I didn't see that, but oh my god. He was asleep during, I think, the president's, like, speech about something. I just saw a bunch of memes on the internet. Ted Cruz fell asleep, poor thing. He's so <laughs> he's so tired from doing the bare, absolute bare minimum for this country. Or Texas. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, so... The movie's actually really good. If you get the chance to watch it, I would I would highly recommend you this, and Jackie this sit is down soaked and watch in bleach it. You're talking about soaked in bleach. Soaked in bleach. Soaked in bleach. So if you uh, type it in on Amazon Prime, it'll come up that IMDb streams it for free with ads. The documentary is about this private investigator that Courtney Love hired to locate Kurt Cobain, and um, after the first encounter with Courtney Love, the private guest investigator was like, "Something's really off with this woman." I'm not going to talk to her again and not record it. So every conversation he's ever had with Courtney Love, he has recorded on a tape and he used it in the documentary. And at a certain point, he turned his investigation around and he was like, I'm going to start investigating his death, but um, whether or not you want to help me with that is up to you. I'm investigating you, though, because something's off. So the whole documentary is essentially framing Courtney Love for his murder. Hmm. Not death. Well, not suicide. Not suicide, yeah. Um... And if you watch the documentary, I don't know, because they, they don't show very detailed crime scene photos, um, but they did do, like, reenactments of the, like, ways that the body was found and how it would have been, how you would have had to have gone through with it in order for it to, to look the way that it looked. Mm-hmm. Um, and they just said, like, it's not plausible that he would have done it himself. Conspiracies. You know, more recently... More recently, in fact, I can't believe we didn't talk about this earlier. More recently, um, <laughs> recently, yeah, there was um, conspiracies and allegations in were they recent? To, yep, <laughs> to um, the singer from Lincoln Park with his suicide. Oh yeah, uh, also, Pizzagate. Was that part of Pizzagate? Mm-hmm. Why they call it Pizzagate? Because it was a child sex trafficking operation that was ran through a pizzeria in Chicago, I think. Uh, my sister was telling me about it like years ago. I didn't look like too much into it, but 
I know like it has something to do with um, Chester and then the pizzeria and Clinton, bunch of masks. Yeah, and then also um, Epstein. That's a huge conspiracy. Epstein, and also uh, no, there's another one in regard to let's let's just to, sidetrack really hold quick. On, hold on, to Justin, <laughs> there was um, the guy from uh, Chris Cornell. Him, he was also something that was like semi involved because excuse me, Ooh. potential exposure for Pizzagate, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think J- uh, Jeffrey Epstein killed himself in prison? No. What do you think happened? Tell me what you think happened. I want to hear your thoughts. I think he ate poison and pooped himself to death. I don't know. I don't know what happened to Epstein's. I, I think that somebody probably pulled like an evil mission, mission impossible and came into his cell and blocked the cameras out and marked him that way, whether they strangled him or poisoned him or I'm just thinking gave there's him. so many conspiracies surrounding high profile people and their deaths. Was there ever an autopsy released? I don't remember. Because, like... I mean, it's alleged that he hung himself in his cell, but... Mm. Alleged. It's alleged. Mm-hmm. That's what they're telling the general population. Did, um... Happened, but did, us conspiracy theorists, <laughs> we know more. Did anything ever happen with, uh, with unpronounceable first name Maxwell? Ghislaine? Sure. I'm not sure what's going on with Ghislaine yet. I know she's, she's so... everywhere, but where she needs to be. She's not in jail anymore? Well, she's in jail, but I mean, okay. like... They like they the internet for the longest time they were just pulling up pictures of celebrities, just mad celebrities. She was in the background of the photo. She was posing with them. She was uh, taking pictures with them. And I'm like, Ghislaine, you getting around town, sis? There's no way you're not involved. I'm pretty sure she's gonna she's gonna take the heat. Interesting. Interesting. Another conspiracy on celebrity death: Brittany Murphy. Remember her? There was a conspiracy on her death. I thought she like overdosed. No, 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 no. Uh, so Brittany Murphy died of, I believe, pneumonia is what they called it. Really? Um, in her house in Beverly Hills. The reason why it's such a conspiracy is because it was like super rapid and super weird. And then her husband at the time was very creepy. And then six months later, <laughs> very creepy, very creepy, very, very creep, creepy, very creep. Um, he was and there was a thing on i want to say hulu about her death like a, a whole little like mini documentary because she's actually. from edison new jersey yeah and they the reason why like it, the circumstances surrounding her death are so weird is because she died and then like almost six months to the day he died the exact same causes hmm. conspiracies who was her husband i don't remember his name he was a screenwriter hmm. he was very um creepy I gotta show you a picture of this motherfucker. I think his name was Simon. Is his name like Simon Frankenstein? Like what? <laughs> Tell me about a conspiracy. <laughs> are, are we talking in the land of Hollywood or anyone? Like... Anyone you got down, girl? Girl. Oh my god, where do I begin? I mean, if we're Simon going... Monjack. No idea. Um, You're gonna tell me that's not a creepy face. Hello. <laughs> that dude looks like he's made of basement. Do you know what he looks like? He looks like he's made out of Play-Doh that's sitting out in the sun. Very hot. Very bubbly. Very melty. He looks like um, the dough bubble of a burnt pizza. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> he looks like Joe Exotic's eyebrow ring hanging down. <laughs> That was fucking funny, Alex. I'm. Pr- oh, that was that was good. Oh, delirious Alex has entered the chat. Um, <laughs> in regards to conspiracy stuff, I mean, obviously some of the biggest ones, especially surrounding the country, are down south. In don't you dare say it. What down south? Where Nevada, New Mexico? Oh, <laughs> is that considered south? I guess it's southern. It's southwestern. Well, I would say west. Southwestern. Just west. Well, because like Nevada's kind of in the middle of the United States. What conspiracy you got about Nevada? Nevada. Well, I've got a conspiracy. Why do we call it Kansas and Arkansas and not Arkansas? I don't know. The English language is just fucking, fucking stupid. stupid. Um, eh. but I haven't had one of those in a minute. What? Well, it's true. Area fifty one. Which, if everybody remembers, was it last year? It was 2019? 2019 or 2018, I don't remember. 2019 was Storm Area 51, where everyone was supposed to... First and foremost, what I want to fucking say about that is they organized Storm Area 51. People actually showed up, but like 10 people showed up. 
Meanwhile, somebody made a joke and a meme about the great Josh fight of 2021 and like a football stadium of people showed up to fight each other. And a little kid won. It was very heartwarming. A little kid won a fucking football stadium fight? I mean, it was like a pillow fight, but then like it was all for like for happy times. How do you not know about this? I don't know about this. But the thing about it is um, I, I would, go to a giant I would contest his, his victory. Because it was supposed to be a battle of Josh Swain's. And they, like, in in the picture, it's like somebody found all these people named Josh Swain. And they're like, on this day of this month, meet here at these coordinates at this time to to figure out who the best. Who's, who's the superior. The best, the best Josh Swain is. And they was did there it. that many? There was, there. I would want to guess there was at least 30 people there. Like, I understand Josh is is a common name but like Swain is a, such a random last name I mean I don't know if they were all Josh Swain imagine they got all like, John Smiths together together it's a good way to control population bring them all together and then firebomb them chemtrails Ooh, real dark um, conspiracy chemtrail yeah, area 50 the area 51 the story behind god knows how many movies how many video games books and so on the alleged kind of science experimentation grounds for alien activity i think for a good period of time if you google if you like map quested remember map quest or if you like mm. searched area 51 on a map it just wasn't there now it's in like california or some shit or nevada it's in nevada, it's in nevada yeah but i think part of that was pre-storm area 51 right because like eventually someone discovered it or some shit and so then they're like, like oh fuck they know it's here we gotta put it on the map yep um, do I'm, you pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's... Is that the HBO show? No. It's on um, on Prime, Invincible. It's the... Is that like, the cartoon? Yeah. It's like the, it car- it's like the cartoon version of The Boys. I haven't watched it yet. Heard good things. Going to watch it at some point. But um, Very good. I just want to say, because they're like... It's a... Um, not really like a spoiler, because the season finale just came, but there, there was a part where... This guy is talking to the one superhero, and he's like, uh... They're in like this giant white room, and he's like, oh, lights... And then, like, they change the lighting, and it's all of a sudden he's in this, like, giant warehouse, and all these people are working on shit. And they're like, yeah, we control who can see what through what rays of light. And that's why you can't see Area 51. Hmm. So. Interesting. That is good. But, um, I'm pretty <laughs> sure, I'm pretty sure t- Area 51 is, uh, is considered a no-fly zone, so you can't fly over it. And if you do fly over it, if you fly over it, I believe you you'll get die. shot down. You about to lose your leg. And then on top, <laughs> on top of Area 51, you have Roswell, New Mexico, which I think the first sighting for that was 1947. Oddly, and, uh, cannot talk. Oddly enough, on the Fourth of July. Isn't it funny how I couldn't read for ship? But the minute I opened this book and read a passage, I was like clean, clear, and concise. Vince learned to read. Everybody, the illiteracy has faded. I know how to read. Okay, <laughs> I'm just saying. Like he, like. <laughs> Uh, my own words, I, I seem to be stuttering to get out, but like words written in a book that I've never read before that I just flip to randomly. I'm like, let's go. And also that entire thing you just did. Let the anger flow through you. Um, <laughs> did we just talk all together? <laughs> I knew it was coming. Horrible. You predictable bitch. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, so this gentleman, I forgot his name and I didn't want to. Let's call him Smitty. Sure. Smitty found um, some broken pieces of metal and god knows what in his in his farm so he didn't know what they were so he called the police the police called the air force and they showed up to pick up the pieces in armored cars very suspicious very interesting after all sorts of news reports and all sorts of stuff going on they found out that it was part of a project called uh where did i write it down um project mogul Something aimed towards spying on the Soviet Union. Ah. Yeah, you figure. Hmm. That was back in the day. Back in the Dizzy. Big conspiracy. Mm -hmm. Big conspiracy. There's also speculation that Area 51 was used for the moon landing fake. (gasps) A scandalous. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on the Bermuda Triangle? Oh my god, I want to go there. (laughs) I want to go there so bad. Just so you can never be seen again. Yeah! I remember. There was Send me sh- in the jet ski. There was a show on um, ABC Family called S Club 7. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. I S fucking Club 7. hate you because I thought you were going to talk about a show from the 90s where like people go into the Bermuda Triangle and then a bunch of crazy shit happens. 
Okay, well, if you'd let me finish. Welcome to my world. <laughs> world Ask Seven, world, there was an episode the where teenage, they were on a boat. The world of teenage Jesus Red Bull. <laughs> Rumspringa. There was an episode where they were on a boat and they fell asleep and the boat drifted into the Bermuda Triangle. And apparently it just, like, altered time. And you, like, go back in time to, like, certain areas. That was their version. You never hear about the Bermuda Triangle anymore. Uh, no, it's really, it's like, really it's quite over? faded, honestly. Yeah. Is it like the happening where it's just over? Um, no, it's like it's like how the Kardashians just like pushed Paris Hilton out of the spotlight. Like something new came along, and they're like, "Let's talk about that instead." What pushed the Bermuda Triangle out of the spotlight? Area Fifty One. No, it didn't. Area okay. Fifty One, nineteen forty-seven. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, another, just another conspiracy, bitch. Okay. Like, okay. like a conspiracy bitch or a conspiracy comma bitch? Conspiracy comma bitch. Yes. Um, conspiracy bitch comma bitch. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Let's talk about JFK. Can we talk about the elephant in the room? His gaping head blown onto Jackie Kennedy's fucking pink dress. I mean, that's another... Jesus. That's another... Um, have you seen the footage How of that? You were... It's fucking sick. Yeah, I try, I try not to look at people getting their head blown off, but um, weak. The uh, it goes back to what you were saying about Kurt Cobain. How like everyone tries to track like how he how it was fired, like the damage it did to his skull, is the same as Kurt Cobain's body being the way it was. Like, there's no way he did this to himself. It's right. the same thing as like the shooter on the grassy knoll and the magic bullet and all that and the um the observatory, the umbrella man. The Umbrella Man is one I remember you mentioned the other day, and I didn't remember that one. So, tell me about you, the Umbrella Man. If you look Ella, at Ella, Ella, JFK. If you look at the footage of that day, right before he turns the corner, there's a man dressed in all black with a black umbrella, just standing there in broad daylight, and no one knows who the fuck it is, why they're there, or what's going on. And they actually use that as part of like a huge storyline in the Umbrella Academy in season two. Mm. They also used... I saw it written down here, so I just want to read it. Um, uh, MK Ultra Mind Control. They also kind of... like MK ta- Ultra is something I found out about. To, LSD and shit, right? I found out about MK Ultra like, maybe within the last two years. And all I knew about it is that it's a song by Periphery. But then I didn't... Uh, my, my coworker, who's very big into like conspiracy conspiracy stuff um told me about it and how it was like a mind control thing yeah so um roughly i mean i could open to the passage but from what i remember they were using psychedelic drugs to kind of help aid in their own oh here we go how to better win a war than gain control of the minds of the enemy that was the aim of the secret mk ultra human research program into behavior modification run by the cia scientific intelligence division in the 1950s and 60s so, uh, the 1960s drug culture popularized magic mushrooms, which from psilocybin was synthesized by switch eight. A- psilocybin. Thank you. Was synthesized by Swiss scientist Albert Hoffman. He also first extracted LSD from a ergot eye fungus. Both drugs are hallucinogenic. I'm so proud of your eloquence for how you read that. Right? Like, I don't understand, like, how that <laughs> happened. But also, like, I can't believe you know how to say What is it? Psycho... What? Psychocilocybin. Yes. Mm-hmm. Big ups to... Psilocybin. No, it's not... There's no psycho in front of it. Just oh, psilocybin. 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 Well, thanks, uh, Brendan Boyd. Who that? The singer from Incubus. Um, oh, okay. Their older music uh, had a song about mushrooms, and one of them was about psychocilocybin and mushrooms... And in part of the song, he's going one for you. Well, he sings it, so I'm just I'm gonna sing it. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk sing it, it to you. Sing me a tune. I'm gonna talk it to you. And he says, one for me, one for you. Two for me, one for you. Three for me, one for you. Talking about mushrooms. Yeah, it's a lot of mushrooms. It is a lot. Of I don't even like that many mushrooms on like a burger. You don't like three mushrooms on a burger? No. What? Wait. Wouldn't he have technically had six mushrooms? You don't like six mushrooms on a burger? Not that. That's too many. That's not too many. That's too many. That's too many. Give me one big shiitake. Shit. <laughs> Do you want a shiitake or a portobello? Ah, uh, shiitake. Remember when they did that in Spy Kids? Shiitake. I think instead did of that, saying shit, I think they did that in um, Spy Kids. Jim Carrey and uh, uh, Ace Ventura too. Maybe. Hmm. Shiitake. Chicago. Let's talk about a fun conspiracy for a second. 
Wait, what else are you going to say about JFK? That was it? I mean, the conspiracy of his death is that there's like there was a hitman. Somebody said that the umbrella guy, when he opened his umbrella, it like set off a silent like uh, bullet. I'm sure that somebody said that there was a bomb in his head that they detonated because he was like getting too powerful as president. There's a massive amounts of conspiracies. The Harvey Oswald. Yeah. But a fun conspiracy is that there's a conspiracy that any place that you go where they ask your name to order, they write your name wrong because it's a marketing strategy that you're going to complain about them writing your name wrong. And it's just free advertising. So like Starbucks, when they write like A-E-E-E-X. <laughs> You're like, that's not my fucking name, dude. <laughs> what? I don't even know. I... <laughs> my Xena? I bought that game yesterday. I bought Xena the Warrior Princess for Nintendo 64. I'm so fucking excited. Oh my god. You know, I... Hey! <laughs> you remember she used wow, to say that? way loud. Um, it was, but it didn't break the register on It here. broke wow. my eardrums. <laughs> I'll break something else in a minute. Yeah. Um... The, the my favorite mispronunciations for name writing have come from some of my own friends, and then one I saw online they put it was like I told them Mark with a C, so they Dang. spelled it C A R C K. I was like, that's fucking great. Two C's, and then C-C. uh, and then Merrick has gotten a coffee or a meal, and it Poor just Merrick. it just said Mark it. Market. Market. Like, Eric, I can understand. Mark, I can understand. Eric? What do you, like, how would you misspell Eric? No, no, I'm saying, like, instead of Merrick. Oh, okay. Market. I, I mean... Have, I've gotten... Uh, when I would make orders for stuff, I've gotten A-L-E, ale. I've gotten Ares, or Aries, depending on how you pronounce it. A-R-E-S. Huh. And then I've gotten many things, much like how you introduced me today. Yes, God. <laughs> don't you forget it. And don't you forget it! Do you believe in flat Earth theories? Like, do I believe the Earth is flat? No. Do you, like, do you believe in people's theories about it? Yes, of course. Do you believe the Earth is flat? That's what I just asked you. Well, you said theories. Do you there's... believe in them? No. Okay, so you don't believe the Earth is flat? No. Okay. Great. Thank you. That's it. Have you ever... <laughs> have you ever... Have you ever looked into the flat earth theory? Do you know who like breathed new life into the theory of flat earth? B.O.B. the rapper tweeted about the earth being flat and people were like, oh my God, flat earth. Oh my God. The guy who wrote that song where no one cares about him and they care about Ailey Williams for the thing. Oh my God. No flat one... earth guy is talking about airplanes in the night sky. I could... <laughs> Dude, for, if if I can just go on a little bit of a tangent about oh, sure, B-O-B. please. His most, this wouldn't be our show. His most didn't. popular songs are uh, from people singing stuff for him for guest vocals. He's not he's not known for his lyrics. He's known for the hooks on his songs. Absolutely. Yeah. Bruno Mars, Haley Williams. He said Bruno even... Mars. What? Which song what? was Bruno Mars? I'm lying. That was Travis McCoy. I'm thinking of the song Billionaire. Who's Travis? The guy from Jim Class Heroes. He dated Kate Merrick oh, for a while. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, it, he had Rivers Cuomo from Weezer. He did the the magic. I got the magic. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. And then he had Haley Williams for... for uh, I've got the magic. Yeah, that me. one. Yeah. Those are the only two songs I can name. I finally he, fucking remembered what I was going to show he, you. Uh, oh, my God. Remember remember Rockwell, the guy who did uh, I Always Feel Like Somebody's Watching Me? Yeah. No one gives a shit about any other part in that song. Except for Michael Jackson's chorus. However, my favorite part of what that song... But I listen to that song all the time. I... In the middle of a sentence. I was in the middle of a sentence too, alright? When? When you interrupted me like two minutes ago. Fuck you. Um, my favorite part of that song is the way he sings the lyric, What am in the shower? It's as if he doesn't even say a word or he turns into like a British colonial judge. Because he's afraid. It's, a, it's good. He's afraid to wash his hair. Because he's going to open his eyes and someone's standing here. And I fucking love it. To anyone who might be able to hear through the mics, it just started raining. It's pouring now. I'm trying to think. Which is also a conspiracy. The government weather control device. Yes. 
It's all right. So that Kid Cudi song. Could um, you be more specific? I know. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> memories. Kid Cudi memories. Do you know that song? No. Is it the I one just want to let for? it go for the night. That that would be the best therapy for me. Hey, hey, do 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 do. Yeah, yeah. Boop 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 boop. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Young and Wild and Free? Cause that's, no. Is that Kid Cudi? This is David Guetta and Kid Cudi Memories. But somebody, somebody, there's a conspiracy that the person who sings the vocals on that is Ronnie from the Jersey Shore. <laughs> that's great. And that's what I was trying to think of earlier in this episode. When I was like, what the fuck was I going to look up? It's amazing that you forgot anything Jersey Shore related. Oh, it, it takes a quick distraction, that's all. Hmm. And usually it's just another Jersey Shore thing. <laughs> It's usually something related, related to the sort. Um, let's talk about Josie and the Pussycats, can we? The conspiracy of Josie and the Pussycats and subliminal messages. Have you ever seen the, have you ever actually seen the movie Josie and the Pussycats? No. Okay. Um, if you haven't seen it, I highly, 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 highly encourage it. Please go watch it. No. I know you won't. I will feed you food. Remember the magic? I will feed you whatever food you want, buy you whatever beverage you want. I'll get you a craft beer. I'll get you a a special juice. I'll get you dessert, ice cream, cold stone, whatever you want. If you sit down and watch that movie with me. I would love to watch (laughs) you watch it. Is a special juice like just a very good apple juice or is it drugs? A Shirley Temple. Ooh. (laughs) It's we a Shirley Temple. We still, still have original Shirley Temples. <laughs> how about how about how about your fucking girlfriend posted like a thing on her story about Shirley Temples, and I was like, please tell me that's what you actually got me as a gift, and she was like, oops, no. And I was like, fuck. Well, truth be told, you can get those. I think at liquor stores because Saranac Probably. Saranac is a well, they're, they're just regular Shirley Temples. Saranac is a brewery. There's no the, alcohol in them. It's just a Shirley Temple. I'm pretty sure. Shut the fuck. Oh, I had no idea you could just buy pre-made Shirley Temple. Saranac, um, it, it's kind of like Jones Soda. Well, they, they they make, like, craft drinks that way. I'll have to look. Yeah. Yeah, you do. <laughs> That's your job of the week. Look for Shirley Temples. Josie and the Pussycats. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I'm going to keep bringing this fucking movie up. Uh, you've already... You've already I'm, I'm going I'm to keep bringing this up. You've already put um, coal in the engine. So the movie itself... Is very meta, so it's very on the nose. So you, it, like everyone involved in making the movie knows they're making a movie about this type of subject matter. Like no one, no one's actually thinking like we're making an Academy Award winning movie. This is gonna be this is gonna change the world. We're doing God's work. No, they were they were making a movie that had the utmost amount of product placement with the uh, insertion of record labels putting subliminal tracks over music to generate teens and people listening to the music to buy things to stimulate the economy it it's wild it's a wild ride did you look this up or did you get really high and watch the movie no this is actually the subject matter of the fucking movie and like oh. josie and the pussycats like they stop it from happening spoiler it. alert it happened it, this movie came out in 2001 so fuck off 20 years ago <gasps> oh what a moment it's That's, so good um... parker posey's in it alan cumming Rosario Dawson, Tara Reed. We love Tara Reed on this podcast. Hey, sis. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine she's listening to this. Just like these fuckers are talking about me again. I just want to listen to a conspiracy theory podcast. She's our she's our one listener in like Albuquerque, New Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Albuquerque. Uh, Albuquerque. Oh, there's a conspiracy that like certain states don't actually exist. There's a conspiracy that South Dakota doesn't exist. And if you say you're from South Dakota, you're really just from North Dakota. And, like, South Dakota is not real. That's weird that you say that because South Dakota has, like, one of the most, if not the most American monument, like, in existence. Conspiracy. Have you ever seen it in real life? Mount Rushmore? Have you seen it in real life? Have you climbed Mount Rushmore? No, but there is a conspiracy theory that behind Mount Rushmore is another government planning thing. You know it's behind Mount Rushmore? It's a red room where they just have orgies. All the presidents that served past terms, that's where they retired. Did you ever see Richie Rich? Which one? Isn't there, like, a few? The original with Macaulay Culkin? Was that? Yeah, I think so. Don't they end at Mount Rushmore and somebody doesn't, doesn't somebody, like, fall off of it and die or something? I don't know. I don't remember. I feel like that happens. It's a conspiracy. I'm going to look it up right after I talk to you about the Georgia Guidestones, which I just found out about earlier, yes, which are very, very interesting. Tell me about them, because I didn't listen to you when you were talking about them earlier. Yeah, that's right. For the sake didn't. of this podcast. Yeah, bitch. Yeah, that's exactly why you didn't listen. 
<laughs> no, I was trying to fix the fucking audio issues. <laughs> that is true. So these were built in 1980 in Elberton, Georgia, which I'm actually going to look up how far that is away from my uncle and brother. Ooh. Because that's very interesting. Road trip. Road trip. There, I actually would totally go see these. There are 10 guidelines on the monument written in eight languages. So I'm assuming it's, you know, eight different languages, kind of like how we say bitch in different languages, 10 guidelines for life, (laughs) which seem to be set for rules or are set of rules there. I cannot fucking talk. The scriptures are basically rules for humans. Gotcha. For instance, one inscription means maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. While another reads rule, passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. Which makes me think there's some mystical shit behind these pillars. The monument was paid for by a man who gave an alias, so no one actually knows who he is and why it was built. But a lot of people think that the inscriptions are telling the future and a guideline for how to rebuild society after an apocalypse. Interesting. Isn't it? Others believe Satanists or the New World Order built the sculpture to promote their agenda. Hmm. Either way, makes you think. They're pretty cool looking if too. If you had to, let me see. If you had to make your own scripture, what would you what would you have it read on it? Like what would you put as your like way to restart the world? What would be my like what would be like my commandment? Yeah. What do I always say? Like what you like, just don't be a dick about it. <laughs> that's your that's your way to rebuild the world. It's a great way to rebuild the world. Okay. Good for you. <laughs> what would yours be? Uh, no condoms. Ever. <laughs> it's how we repopulate. I'm trying to spread my seed as far as I can go. I'm like a fucking gardener over here. Just seeding holes left and right. Jesus Christ. The chemtrails were actually just me jizzing all over the world to populate. That was chemtrails. Me. How did you miss the opportunity to just call them cum trails? <laughs> I didn't name them. Everyone else did. Everyone else called them chemtrails. I was the one trying to say cum trails. But you were the, you were the person suggesting it, and they're like, "I was like, like, guys, 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 I have a great idea. You have to listen to me. Let's just shoot mist cum all over the south." They're like, "No, nah, we can't do that." I was like, "Yeah, you can. Cum trails. It's so genius." Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Especially from you. I love that you targeted the South. But the problem... You, you targeted the South. You targeted the area below the Mason-Dixon where <laughs> the gay culture just isn't accepted as much. Absolutely. You're trying like, to plant my seed in the South so that way the gays can infiltrate. I'm trying to double our numbers. Divide and conquer, bitch. <laughs> That's genius. What a... <laughs> Hollywood, are you listening? Yeah, Hollywood, are you listening? I just came up with that on the fly. Cast Billy Eichner and Neil Patrick Harris. No, now. cast me. You can be in it too. Uh, yeah, it's my st- my life story. I'd like to be in it. Thanks. You can be a Southerner. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You, you Welcome can, to Christian Airlines. You, you can be the result 20 years later. You know what? They they did it in place. Good golly, though. it sure is hot down here. <laughs> That's basically like a Leslie. Let me pour myself a Leslie sweet Jordan. tea. Yeah, that's a Leslie Jordan uh, type of voice, by the way, just in case you didn't figure it out yet. Um, so my original he, he idea sounds like was, the one gay dude from Family Guy. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, originally, though, I didn't want it to shoot out of a plane. I wanted it to shoot out of two giant breasts. Hmm. Chemtrails out of titties. I'm surprised you didn't do it with the, like, in Austin Powers, like with the giant dick like shape. No, oh just... my god, the dick! Oh, the dick! No, no, because titties. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Pew, pew, like a fembot. So pew, would it be a plane or a helicopter or a balloon? Um, it would be like a, like, um, like a blimp, but two and then like fused together to look like, to look like jugs. <laughs> Titties, boobies, breasts, and jugs. Say that ten times fast. Titties, boobies, breasts, and jugs. Titties, boobies, breasts, and jugs. Titty boob. I almost would like to you do were, it. You were on a I was, trail. I was, I know. Listen, I know all about titties, boobies, breasts, and jugs, but we don't have all day. <laughs> As a gay man, I would like to make a confession here and now. I love boobs. Boobs are great. great. I love big boobs. I like small boobs. I was <laughs> I was with my friend the other day, and Joe was sitting next to me. And he was like, do I look skinny? And at first, I didn't hear him say skinny. 
I couldn't even tell you what I thought I heard him say because there was music playing. But he, like, said something about his boobs. And I was like, yeah, your boobs are so small, you're like a fucking minus A cup. And I thought that was so funny. I thought I was a fucking genius. I saw something online the other day where somebody said that somebody who has pierced nipples and little titties is like having staples in paper. I need you to leave. That's too fucking funny. I didn't write that. I read it. That's like you're like at the end of the day, you're just a vacuum with nipples. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> is there a vacuum conspiracy? <laughs> There probably is, honestly. I, I do have one conspiracy here. It's pretty lighthearted. Welcome mats were invented by vampires to bypass being invited in. That's a conspiracy hmm. theory. It's still rude. I mean, listen. It would be nice to have a verbal invite. But, like, I would never get a welcome mat. I would literally get, like, a mat that just says, don't come back. I wouldn't get a mat that says welcome. Because not all ye who welcome... Uh, not, <laughs> not all ye who enter are welcome. Hmm. Like you are not welcome anymore. Your time has run out. It's time to go. Grab your bags, take your CDs, and leave. I feel like you're about to hit me with like a Shania Twain song. No. No, just my bed. <laughs> I can hear her calling me. <laughs> yeah, it is. What is it like? The rain, the rain started and I immediately just got tired. Uh, it's so soothing. I know. Absolutely. The um, government weather controller is really just making things so They want sleepy. us to go to sleep so we stop talking about conspiracies. <laughs> we, we're exposing too much. We're exposing too much. Um, another conspiracy, fun and lighthearted, Disney came up with Disney on Ice and the movie Frozen. So that way when you would Google it, the search results would put all the searches for Walt Disney Frozen under the park at the bottom of the search. So people would stop searching it. So if you search for Disney Frozen, it would come up with the movie. If you search for Disney on Ice, it would come up with like the like the skating show. So that way people would stop looking for the Frozen Walt for Disney. Walt Disney's cryogenically frozen anti-Semitic body. I is that real? Like, do people really get cryogenically frozen? And if they do, what the fuck are you gonna do when you get defrosted? How does that work? Like, I know they didn't Austin Powers, but like. I don't think it's ever been like debunked because eventually you like if you freeze, I would assume your organs stop, mm-hmm. and like if your organs stop, then I think your brain function stops. Like I don't think. Thank you so much for letting us know how the function of life happens, Alex. We're talking about cryogenesis here. I know, but obviously, obviously, when the the organs shut down, the brain stops functioning, the blood stops flowing, the heart's not moving anymore, but. If you're going to cryogenically freeze somebody, you have to have a way around that. So what's the way around that? Mm, a Come snorkel? On, scientist. A what? A snorkel. <laughs> a snorkel. It's actually a feather boa, and you just tie it around your neck, and it keeps you safe. It's That's a, it. You put on your hater blockers, <laughs> and you survive. You know what? I would like to cryogenically freeze to, like, season three Jersey Shore Snooky. That is who I want to cryogenically freeze to unleash into the world when the world ends. So that way we can just have, like, the actual Snooky uh, South Park episode. So that way... <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, I bitch. do. I do. Um, I thought you were going to say you're going to unleash her while the world's in ashes so she can be like, where's the beach? And then it'll make sense. Can you imagine I unleash her when, like, the world starts over flooding, like, in uh, Day After Tomorrow? And she's like, where's the beach? And it's like, everywhere is the beach now. Welcome. Wasn't that a big conspiracy, 2012 and the Mayans? That was a huge conspiracy. Or it was just somebody being really dyslexic. Or they ran out of numbers. Hmm. Maybe they just ran out of ink when they were writing the calendar. Well, they like, they I guess were, it stops here. If they were dyslexic, then that would mean that 2021. Welcome to Thunderdome. <laughs> Imagine, like, the world starts to shake, like, right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, that would be quite interesting, if mm-hmm. you ask me. Um, I have to say, if I had to choose, I would rather I would rather be wiped out by, like, some mass annihilation of the world than, like, live my life to fruition and die old and withered. That's just me, though. That's just girly things. <laughs> <laughs> but would you would you rather like 
Yes, ask me, would you rather? Go ahead. Mm-hmm, I know. Would ask you me. Would you rather be wiped out, or would you rather be given the chance to rebuild? Like, Waterworld, or like... How is, am I guaranteed the opportunity to be part of, like, the founding group yeah. of people? Yeah, like, you, like the, the, the disaster has happened, you have survived, you are part of the, the, the resistance. You are part of the world now. I'm part of the resistance, or I'm part of, like, the New World Order? The same thing. Not, not, uh, no, you've got the New World Order, and you've got the resistance who resist the New World Order. You dumb motherfucker. Oh my god. You, Do you not you, know how that works? Would you rather be wiped out, or would you rather be part of the rebuilding of the world after a natural disaster? Um, Wiped out. A global disaster. Wiped out. Rebuilding sounds like a lot of work. That just sounds like too much. Just take me out. Take me out to the ball game. Don't take me. I hate baseball. It's so fucking boring. Take it's me to so a hockey boring. game. That's right. Take, um, me, take me to a hockey game where like, they might punch a tooth out of someone's mouth. So a hockey game. <laughs> did I say hockey or did I say baseball? No, I'm just saying like yeah, a hockey. A, a hockey game is where the one is. the one pride and joy that I have with actually watching the sport of hockey is knowing that the minute two players come in physical contact with each other, I can scream "fuck him up," and they'll be like, "Okay, here we go." Conspiracies. They're all just hot headed. I don't know. <laughs> Everything's a conspiracy. I uh, I would rather be part of the the rebuilding. So I think you took what I said out of context earlier. Instead of like living my life like this world and just continuing in the path that I'm going through and dying at like 97 where I'm like old in bed and can't like take a shit without having someone help wipe my asshole. Uh-huh. I'd rather just die in like a mass. No, like, I, the under- whole world I understood ends. that completely. I just yeah. offered a different question. Oh, okay. I was like, I was like, yeah, no, I really don't care about rebuilding the world that much. Um, but I would love to see where I go. Where I end up, the conspiracy of heaven, hell, and the hereafter. Um, what's the other one? Reincarnation. Purgatory. <sighs> I would not want to go to purgatory. Can no. you imagine? Purgatory is working retail, and someone's trying to make a return, but it's one day past the return policy, and they won't let it go. And they don't have the payment that they used to uh, pay initially. What's but they um, want you to get the manager, but you are the manager. What's the Lil Nas X song? What's it called? Montero. Montero. By your name. Montero. That's the other one. <laughs> Bitch! That was cool. That was, was fucking cool. I could That was fucking cool. I am not disagreeing with you. Congratulations on your basketball. But, um, you know, you must have played with Jesus back in the day when he was a teenager. <laughs> Do you think you would have played basketball? Can you imagine playing basketball in sandals and a dress? Hell yeah. <laughs> a rope? <laughs> That's... <laughs> Yeah, rope. Whatever. Fuck off. Um, I mean, he might have had some gym shorts. Made of made of the finest. Maybe the exact same material. Made of the finest wool. Can you imagine? He's in his fucking robe and he's like, hold on, let me slip into something more comfortable. Turns around, it's the exact same material, but just fucking basketball clothing. Mm-hmm. Jesus is magical, huh? I really want to know about young Jesus. I would really like I to, want to know, know like, about did he young play, Sheldon. Did he play baseball? I don't want to know about young Sheldon. <laughs> Like did, he, did they play catch? Um, I don't know if they would have played catch. He, Jesus probably would have just been like, "Here's a fun idea. Instead of playing catch, why don't I bring your dead dog back to life?" Yeah, like was he doing miracles as, as a kid? The, I would love to know. I, I would. Yeah. Lo- I need. Hello, I feel like the Bible trackers. is. If just... you were there at like twenty AD, let us know. Or like if you've been to church and you know the Bible, the it's fake. Yeah, but it's, if they I don't believe a single word that was. If they in the could Bible. tell us the story, they could tell us the story. I, listen, I would love to hear a story. That's cute, but I don't want to know a story. I want to know facts. If you were with Jesus fucking Christ, come to our show. I'm gonna I'm gonna grab the Ouija board in a minute. Gonna... Did Jesus bring back dead animals, or did he just chug white claws? <laughs> <laughs> Turn water into white claw. <laughs> there you go. That was the original. They were like, Jesus, listen, I know you really wanted to turn water into white claw, but they're both clear, so we really need to give them like a show. Can you make it a color? Yeah. He's like, all right, I guess we'll do fucking wine. Yeah. Here's a Seagram Seven. Fuck you. <laughs> or a Sea Breeze. Whatever the fuck those things were called. Here's my here's my fucking white claw. I'm gonna slit my wrist open. Here you go. Put some let's put some blood in there. Make it red. Is this wine? Mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Fi- mm-hmm. Wine about it, bitch. But, like, can you imagine, like, he just actually created seltzer? 
I was like, this is good, but it tastes like TV static. Can you hit it with Jesus a little... Jesus is the person who invented the croc. Can you, can you hit it with a little bit of a fruit flavor? No. <laughs> Jesus is like, yeah, let me give you a little bit of a fruit flavor. He picks up a fucking speck of air off of an apple, and he goes, Phew, he there picks, you go. He picks the leaves off the burning bush. <laughs> <laughs> there might have been berries in there. Was Jesus the burning bush, or was that Moses? That was Moses, but I don't fucking care. Look at me being all like Christian and shit. Not really. Mm. I just know stupid stuff about the world. <laughs> like Noah's Ark. Um, I mean, Moses part in the Red Sea. Wow. Hey, on that note. Um, on that note, I think it's time we wrap shit up. Because yeah. you're clearly delirious. <laughs> You've never been more right. I know. Um, so, Hot Ones Challenge, Alex. Are you ready for it? No. Me either. The longer I wait, the less I want to do it. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not ready. My intestines aren't ready. I need Pepto Bismol and Tums. I hope everyone's ready to see us cry. Cry, sweat, possibly throw up. Uh, so, throw up. Probably like blow our nose a bunch. Should I bring a garbage can, like a little one? I think that might actually be wise for us to have a garbage can ready, yeah. just on the offset chance. Can that I? Of us... Can I make a suggestion? Sure. So I if, will consider it. If we're gonna do this, and you all y'all getting a little behind the scenes here, yes. Is it just gonna be like ha- I've I've never watched like we're we're basing this off of the popular show Hot Ones. Yes, the we're Hot Ones challenge from First Beef East. Please do not sue us. No, we're, we're just doing this is inspired this by. I went to fun. your store and I spent one hundred twenty dollars on your fucking hot inspired sauce. Inspired by. Just we're doing, doing the hot, it's it. literally a thing. It's called the Hot Ones Challenge. It is the Hot Ones Challenge. Hashtag. Now, are we just gonna try and talk casually through it, or do we like, or do you want to do another round of of game show? We oh, game show would be cool. On on like the actual Hot Ones Challenge, they usually tend to um, well, the one guy interviews a celebrity and we'll ask them a bunch of questions, mm-hmm. and then they have to answer it while they're eating the wings. Um, but I think I think gaming would be actually quite funny. Like a little trivia. Yeah, that might be fun. That might be something to think about. We can talk about this later. And we're doing different foods. It's not just wings? No, it's going to be wings. Oh, it's just wings? Why? What other food would you think? I don't know. I wasn't sure. Chicken wings. Okay. Fuck yeah. Chicken wings. Boneless or bone-in? What do you want? In, for, in respect out of the cards, just do boneless with a fork. Honestly. I appreciate that. And for your eyeballs, because if you touch your eyes after you touch that hot sauce. And also touching just like anything on this table. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're, we're not going to use this table. Old school table's coming back for that. Because it's easy to clean. Okay. Whew. All right, well, on that note, um, my insides are not ready for the Hot Ones Challenge, but I'm excited to uh, kill myself with hot sauce. Tune in next week where we find out that Teenage Jesus also did the Hot Ones Challenge.